So, here we have taken sodium phosphate monobasic here around 3 gram the weight. So, now we will dissolve it in double distilled water. Here we have taken double distilled water out here. Now, we will not add to 50 ml double distilled water directly at the first go. Why? Due to volume adjustment or volume error might be there. Since we are adjusting it around 100 millimolar, molarity calculation requires volume adjustment. So, we will be adding roughly around 200 ml. Here we can see the graduation is made around 100, 200, 300 and 400. However, note down that the graduation in case of a beaker is not actually accurate. So, the graduation is a rough graduation, never go by the graduation mentioned in a beaker, generally take the graduation mentioned in a measuring cylinder, which we will do later on after dissolving this thing. So, we will basically fill this up to 200 ml, roughly up to 200 ml. For that what we will do, we will add here. Once we add, we will just stir it gently. And again go on adding. Here we can see small chunks or small aggregates of this compound sometimes might be formed after adding double distilled water. So, how to remove this? We cannot basically stir it and remove this one. For that, we need to use this magnetic stirrer and this magnetic stirrer calls for this magnetic bar. Now, these are the small magnetic bar. Some of you might be familiar with this one. Time to time, we will be using this thing to dissolve the solid components in double distilled water or required solvents. This magnetic bar has been previously washed. However, I am again wiping this using a clean chem wipe tissue paper. And once I wipe this one, I am just letting it into this solution. Here I can see here I have added this thing, as you have seen I have not used my hand while adding this one, I have just rubbed it using this tissue paper and directly from the tissue paper I have added it in this solution. Now I am pouring again double distilled water up to 200 roughly. So here we have uh, poured around 200 ml of double distilled water. Now I will keep it here in this magnetic stirrer for dissolving of the solute components. For this, this is the magnetic stirrer, I am turning the switch on here. Here we can see the magnetic bar has started to rotate. We can adjust the speed out here using this regulator. We can increase it, we can basically decrease it. Depending upon our required uh, solution, we can uh, regulate the speed. Here if we keep it till here, we can actually see the solute components in this uh, beaker, we can go for volume adjustment. Now once our solution is there in the magnetic stirrer and it is being dissolved, we have to take a measuring cylinder, we have to take a clean measuring cylinder out here, we have to clean it using double distilled water. Now the measuring cylinder we have taken is 250 ml because the solution we are preparing is 250 ml of this phosphate buffer, the component 1 component of this phosphate buffer. So here we can see the graduation is there, so measuring cylinder is exactly graduated and uh, we can assume it to be basically exactly graduated, much more accurate than conventional beaker. So here we can see the graduation from 30, 50, 70 and till 190 and 250. So we have to pour this solution out here in this beaker and we can adjust the volume then up to 250 ml. Now we have to check whether this solid components is completely dissolved or not. Here we can see that the solid component is completely dissolved and we can stop this magnetic stirrer. For stopping this magnetic stirrer, we have to just decrease the speed initially. And then you can switch it off like this way.
Now, I will be pouring the solution out here. Now, please note that this magnetic bar out here, the magnetic bar out here do not drop in this measuring cylinder. Be careful while putting the solution in this measuring cylinder. So, I have completely transferred this uh, solution from here from the beaker to this measuring cylinder and one interesting to note down here is that the volume, the volume out here is basically less than 190. We can see the meniscus out here it is less than 190 or close to 190 ml. However, we have added it around 200 ml. So, the graduation in case of beaker is not accurate. Here we can see uh, in case of measuring cylinder it is 190 whereas in beaker it was around 200. So, better to use a measuring cylinder rather than a beaker. Now, we will take this one and adjust it till 250 ml. For that, we will be taking a double distilled water and we will be adding here. Now, once it reaches around 230 or uh, 240, uh, pour this uh, double distilled water gradually. While it reaches this 250 ml, keep it in a place that is a steady place and a flat place out here. Better do not take it in hand, you know, flat place and add double distilled water. Now, keep it, uh, bring it to your eye level. For that, we have to just take it out, check it out here, and it is more or less okay. So, here we have actually measured 250 ml of sodium hydrogen phosphate monobasic and we will transfer this again in a beaker. Now, we have taken, we have taken this beaker and marked it as uh, NaH2PO4 that is monobasic one and we will be adding the solution to this beaker. And now this one we have prepared to 50 ml 100 millimolar of sodium hydrogen phosphate monobasic. Now we will dissolve the second one that is sodium phosphate dibasic. Out here we have taken this uh, crystalline part sodium phosphate dibasic one here we can see. Now, I will be adding this is the graduation here we can see the graduation part is there around 200 ml of double distilled water. I will initially I will stir it gently. However, I can see basically the solid components is there undissolved within it. I have added roughly around 200 ml double distilled water here. Here we can see the solid component this has not been dissolved out here. So, we will take it in a magnetic stirrer for dissolving here we have added the magnetic bar. So, we will take it in a magnetic stirrer. I am placing this one in a magnetic stirrer. So, we have to leave this one until and unless the entire solution becomes clear and the solid components is completely dissolved. Now, we will check the pH of sodium hydrogen phosphate monobasic one that we have actually prepared and dissolved in double distilled water. For that this is the pH meter as we have seen in earlier during uh, Chris uh, buffer preparation. Now, this pH meter we will just wash this bulb. 
we will be washing this bulb with double distilled water. Now I will be washing this bulb with double distilled water and again wiping it with a clean tissue paper. We have to try this procedure two to three times carefully. We are initially washing it using a jet of this double distilled water. Then after that we will wiping it using a clean tissue paper. Again we will adding double distilled water. And cleaning it. We have to repeat it two to three times. Now we will transfer it in the solution. Better do not keep it here in dry for a long time. Now we are transferring it to the solution. Now I have transferred this uh, pH meter, the bulb of the pH meter in the solution and here we can see the reading of the pH of the solution, it comes to around 4.35. So basically the pH of this 100 millimolar 250 ml sodium phosphate monobasic, it comes to around 4.35 that is in the acidic region. So we have dipped this pH bulb in the solution and here we can see the pH is coming to 4.34. So the pH for sodium phosphate monobasic lies in the acidic region around 4.34. The value mentioned is generally 4 to 4.5 and it is coming 4.34. So we have prepared 100 millimolar sodium phosphate monobasic solution to 50 ml which have a pH of around 4.34. Now we will see the pH for the diabasic solution. So here we can see our solution containing the sodium phosphate diabasic one is almost clear and the solid components is dissolved. So we can basically take this solution for volume adjustment that is take it up to 250 ml. For that we have to lower this regulator, the speed of the magnetic stirrer again and then switch it off. Take this solution in a clean graduated measuring cylinder in the same way that we have done in the previously for monobasic acid. Now we will take this solution in a graduated measuring cylinder. The measuring cylinder we have taken is similar to that we have used for monobasic acid. The measuring cylinder we have taken has been similarly used in case of monobasic acid for volume adjustment. Here we have taken a clean measuring cylinder and now we will pour this solution here. Now before pouring this entire solution we can see the magnetic stirrer or the magnetic bar out here is there in the solution. So one thing I would like to introduce uh, you to all that is a tongue in order to remove this magnetic bar. In order to remove this magnetic bar from the remaining solution we will be using this tongue. This tongue is basically a magnetic, again a magnetic stick. We have to clean this one, this has been previously cleaned and I am just rubbing it using this Kim wipe tissue paper. And then one interesting thing you can see here, once you keep it here, take it here, the magnetic bar will attach with this magnetic tongue and we can remove this thing. And then we can proceed with volume adjustment, we can pour the rest of the solution freely. Then we can see it, it is around 180, it is less than 190. So we can adjust it again using double distilled water.
again once it reaches around 240 ml slowly add double distilled water Now we will take it in a eye level and it's around 250 ml and now we will again pour this solution in a clean dry beaker which will be containing our sodium hydrogen phosphate dibasic solution. We will again wash this bulb of the pH meter since we had previously used this for measuring the pH for monobasic which was acidic. and rub it once again using this tissue paper. Repeat it two to three times. And then we have to transfer this thing into the beaker containing the solution of sodium phosphate dibasic. Here we have immersed this pH meter bulb in the solution. Here we can see the pH comes around 9, around 9.1 to 9.09. .09. Here we can see. So the pH for this dibasic acid is basically in the basic region or in the alkaline region what we can say it comes around 9.09. .09. So once, once we have done with measuring the pH of both the solution we will again wash the bulb, we will take it carefully from the solution. And again wash this one using double distilled water. Now we will we will again wash this using double distilled water. And wipe it using a tissue paper. and then immerse it in the solution out here. We have prepared two different solutions. One is sodium hydrogen phosphate monobasic and another is the dibasic. The two different solutions have two different pH values. One pH values that is sodium hydrogen dibasic is around 9 and the other for monobasic it is around 4. Now what we will do, we will proceed with preparation of phosphate buffer say for pH 7.4. Now the concentration for both of these components are fixed that is 0.1 molar or 100 millimolar. Unlike the tree part where the individual component uh, concentration cannot be exactly or precisely determined out here we can basically con consider the concentration of each and every components that is for monobasic and dibasic. Now how to proceed for preparation of phosphate buffer? Now phosphate buffer pH may range from 8 to 6. Now 6 like 6.5 or 8.2 uh, or something like this and the most common part is 7.4 which we are demonstrating currently. Now how to proceed? For preparation of uh, phosphate buffer having pH 6 or 6.5, we have to take one component in a beaker and add a second component gradually in a titration method. Which component to take is the primary question. Now the component we have to take in a beaker 
should be or rather the component which have the maximum volume should be that uh, solution whose pH is near to a desired pH. Now let us take an example for this one. Suppose the solution or the pH we are bothered with is pH 7.4 or uh, not 7.4 currently the pH we are bothered with is basically 6.5. So, we have two components, number one component is one is the monobasic part which is having a pH of around uh, 4 and the diabasic part which is having a pH of around 9. So, which one to take? Basically, we will take that pH which is closer to 6 or 6.5. In this case, we are having the pH that is 4, that is for the monobasic part we will take in a beaker and then we will add the diabasic part gradually and so that the pH 6.5 can be achieved. When we are going for pH 8 or 8.2 something like that for phosphate buffer, in a similar way we will take that solution whose pH is closer to 8. Whose pH is closer to 8? The solution that is diabasic solution having the pH of around 9. So diabasic solution have pH around 9 and hence we will take the diabasic in a beaker and gradually add the monobasic part to it in order to take the pH from 9 to 8. The basic component for preparation of phosphate buffer is that we have to take that solution whose pH is closer to our desired pH in a beaker and add the remaining the next solution gradually using a uh, pipette to it. So the solution we are preparing is 7.4. So which one to take in a beaker? Yeah, actually you guessed it right. The solution we are taking in a beaker is the diabasic one having pH 9, around 9 and we will add the monobasic 1 having pH 4 in order to bring the pH, the net pH to around 7.4. Here you can see we have taken the diabasic part in a beaker and we have immersed the pH electrode out in this beaker and the pH of this solution is coming around 9.07 that is closer to 9. This is a diabasic 1. Here we have taken the monobasic 1 and this pH is around 4 which we have measured just a few minutes ago. Here what we have done is that we have taken uh, a magnetic bar and kept in a magnetic stirrer. Now one thing you have to be careful is that kindly check that the pH electrode does not come in contact with the magnetic bar which is actually rotating within the solution. What will happen is that if the magnetic bar hits this pH electrode, the pH electrode is very delicate and it will affect the pH electrode, it might break or it might crack. So it is better to maintain some distance between the pH electrode and the magnetic bar. I have taken 1 ml micro pipette, here we can see the 1 ml micro pipette and this is the 1 ml tip. I will be taking this solution that is the monobasic one using this pipette and gradually adding in this diabasic solution. Here I am immersing this pipette, taking the solution and I will be adding drop wise. Here we are gradually adding this one and the pH is being, getting reduced. And once you add it, kindly give it some time for the mixture to become homogeneous and again start adding the solution. So here we can see the pH of the solution gradually decreases. While adding the solution, we should be careful not to pour the solution directly into the pH electrode and try to pour the solution into the diabasic one kept in the beaker carefully and again I am giving it some time in order to mix and become homogeneous. Do not increase the speed too much of the magnetic stirrer, keep it gentle. From 9 it has already come to 8.36. So the pH is gradually decreasing, it has come to almost 
at one point we can see the change in pH becomes very slow and that is basically the buffer region. In a in the initial part the pH decreases in a spontaneous manner in quite smoothly, but later on in the in the part where buffer region is reached, the pH becomes the pH change becomes quite slow. Here we are preparing around 200 ml of the desired pH solution, pH 7.4. That's why you have taken the volume which is lower than 200. That is the basic one, diabasic one. And we are adding monobasic one dropwise. Earlier what used to happen is that uh, for one ml of addition of this uh, monobasic acid, we can see the change in the pH was very high. But here the change in pH is around 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 units. the change is around 0.01 to 0.2 units. So the change is very slow here we can see. So it has reached 7.74. Our aim is to reach the pH 7.4. Whatever happens please note in a hurry do not pour bulk of the solution into the diabasic one in the buffer region. Sometimes it might happen that one might get impatient and uh, add a large uh, volume of solution in the diabasic one, but prefer not to do that because that won't give you the desired pH. You have to add always dropwise. And what might happen is that if you add bulk amount of the monobasic one, the pH of the desired pH might get crossed. Like if I add a large volume like 5 ml of this solution in spite, instead of adding this dropwise, then what might happen instead of 7.4, it might go to 7.0 or even up to 6 uh, in the range of 6.8. So it is not desired. In case such thing happen, we have to adjust it using the diabasic acid that is using the sodium hydrogen phosphate having a higher pH value. So we have reached around 7.5. Now we have to add very carefully, add dropwise. Our desired pH is 7.4. So here the pH change is very slow out here. We will be adding drop wise patiently and allow the magnetic star to make it homogeneous. It is fluctuating between 7.47 to 7.46. So initially what used to happen is that for 1 ml of this monobasic acid solution, the change in pH was around 0.3 to 0.5, but here the change of pH is 0 0.01. So it is completely in the buffer zone and it is reaching our desired pH, it is 7.43. Now we will be adding 7.42. I am giving some time in order to mix the solution. Seven point four one. Hopefully, this would be the last one ml addition. Add drop wise, just drop wise. Here we have reached seven point four, and just let it be there for some time. Since certain times fluctuation might be there, it, we can get 7.41 or 7.39. So let it be there for a few seconds, around 30 seconds or so. So here we can see that the solution is stabilized, the pH meter is stabilized and it is showing 7.4 value. Thus we have prepared our phosphate buffer of pH 7.4 by using two different components. Number one is sodium phosphate. Uh, diabasic one which we have taken in a beaker and to it we have added the second component sodium phosphate monobasic part. By this way we have uh, taken it to 7.4 and the advantage of this method as we have discussed earlier also that we can actually monitor the concentration of the two components unlike the trace part where we cannot exactly monitor the ionic strength of HCl or the other component. Hence we have seen how to prepare our phosphate buffer solution, we have started by weighing the two different components and then we have 
dissolved each of these components in double distilled water and uh, adjusted the volume and then we have prepared our desired solution of pH 7.4. So, while measuring the pH, make sure the electrode is properly dipped in the solution and also take care of the electrode in a properly or manner because the electrode is sensitive and fragile. So, today we have seen how to handle a pH electrode. Initially, we have seen the how to take care of the electrode bulb and other basic precautions for handling pH electrode and next we have seen how to prepare phosphate buffer. Initially we have prepared phosphate buffer of pH 7.4 using two components, one is the diabasic one and one is the monobasic one using different ratios of the two solutions and secondly we have prepared Chris HCl buffer of pH 8.2. These two buffers are required for various uh, biological experiments and apart from this there are several buffers of different pH values which are required for specific experiments. Hope we have shown you how to handle the pH electrode and prepare buffer in a proper way. Thank you. Hello. So, in this first week of lectures, we have talked about several things and uh, in this, uh, so I am going to summarize the important uh, points of what we have learned in this first week of our course. So, we have primarily talked about good lab practices and for example, you should wear a lab coat, you should wear shoes in your lab, you should wear goggles when, uh, when you are working with um, acids or bases, you should wear gloves, things like that. So, the other important point is that you should always maintain a safe work environment. So, you should maintain, prop you should follow the proper safety guidelines which are important not only for your safety but also for the safety of your co-workers, so other students who are working in the lab. We discussed about accuracy and precision. So, these concepts are introduced and these are something that are used regularly in the lab, uh, whether you are making your reagents or whether you are doing an actual experiment and getting your data. So, it is very important to know what is accuracy and what is precision. We introduced some of the commonly used um, equipments in the lab. So, these are all small equipments that we use in a biochemistry lab on a daily basis. So, to accurately measure volumes, we use pipettes or micro pipettes, we use weighing balances, pH meter, etc. So, you have seen all that being used in the lab. And finally, we have talked about the concepts of pH and buffers. So, buffers, we have seen that there are so many different buffers. We talked about goods buffers and we have specifically um, talked about and also prepared in the lab two buffers, tris buffer and phosphate buffer. These are the two buffers that are most widely used in a biochemistry lab. And we have also talked about the basic concepts of uh, buffer preparation which is henderson hasselbeck equation. Uh, we have talked about conjugate acid and conjugate base. So, it is important to know these principles because based on this you are going to design your experiments and make your buffers. So, um, these are some of the concepts we have covered and we will see you again in the next week. Thank you.